Hydrogen car sales have struggled a lot. Over the first half of 2024, sales figures for North American fuel cell cars is down 70% year over year, with no real sign of recovery in the near future. The number of hydrogen stations themselves has plateaued in the United States, with most of the concentration being in California, a state that has seen multiple companies like Shell and Chevron pull the plug on various hydrogen fueling projects. At least in the short term, the trend seems to be pretty clear away from hydrogen EVs. But what if I told you there's actually a new way of approaching this complicated problem that has resulted in a potential future for hydrogen transportation, not just for cars, but for trucks, ships, and buses, which is just right now starting to gain traction. Well, let's discuss that problem right now. There's no easy way to sugarcoat this, folks. Based on Cox Automotive's latest Q3 EV sales figures, battery electric cars are the majority by far of wholesale and retail sales figures, with the Toyota Mirai and the Hyundai Nexo being at the bottom and seeing declines in sales of more than 35 to 93% year over year. And be assured, folks, that this sales problem isn't to do more with the technology than it has to do with the infrastructure, where the chicken and egg problem simply isn't getting enough traction to reduce the cost of the fuel and to motivate buyers to purchase these vehicles. But that isn't stopping innovation on the technology side from still happening in the hydrogen industry. As seen by the revelations of Renault, Toyota, Honda, and even Nissan, hydrogen fuel cells can be a viable alternative for more niche and longer-range extended-use applications where batteries fail in terms of their range as well as their gravimetric energy density. Infrastructure for hydrogen will only become viable when there is enough sufficient green hydrogen production to reduce the cost, and that is dependent significantly on private investment as well as innovations in industrial use and decarbonization on a much wider scale. Transportation is not going to be the way hydrogen gains traction. Instead, it's going to be one of the very important use cases of the overall hydrogen revolution, which is just now starting to gain a little bit of traction, and although has seen a little bit of hiccups because of heightened interest rates. And it's that end-use application that companies like Renault and this new French startup called Hopium is trying to target. Hopium is a clean tech startup based out of France that just this month had its very first commercial road test of its hydrogen fuel cell luxury sedan. Now this sounds similar to pretty much every other prototype and concept in the electrification space that we've seen for the past decade. Companies release these concepts with teasers on YouTube, and nothing really happens then. What sets this company's hydrogen strategy apart is the fact that it's a joint venture focused on building the technology from the ground up. And this is a really underrated approach to developing products. Tesla and Lucid, for example, have been successful with their respective strategies in obtaining mass production and high energy efficiency because of this same approach, where they leverage the reduction in battery cell packs and modules to create these vehicles from the ground up with their inverters, their batteries, and design the chassis and the body control stuff around the powertrain. And this approach simply hasn't been yet seen in the hydrogen industry. Yeah, there's been plenty of cars like the Toyota Mirai or the Hyundai Nexo 
that have had fuel cell modules put into chassis that have been refined and revised from their conventional gasoline counterparts. But that approach has clearly hit a stalemate in technological adoption. And because hydrogen is still a very nascent technology in fuel to gain access to, it's ever more important to focus on a niche application in low volume with extremely high technological innovation, where they can maximize range and reduce fueling time even more compared to battery electric. And that's something, folks, that this startup has been able to do. Because this car can achieve a range of 620 miles, which has been verified by independent testing and the company's own on-track appearance earlier this month. Not only that, but with the high compression onboard hydrogen storage system, you can refill it at a commercial shell or first hydrogen element refuel station, which is three minutes on the clock. Combined power output is around 493 horsepower with a top speed of 143 miles an hour and a 0 to 60 in less than five seconds. But those figures obviously matter a lot less at a time of technological pivoting. This is all achieved through a fuel cell system that is built from the ground up and tailored around the chassis. The robustness and reliability of this hydrogen propulsion system was recently verified in a road test with rapid accelerations, decelerations, vibrations, and high-speed thermal cycling to ensure that these range estimates can be met. And clearly, the potential has been verified. And what's important to note here is that if the automotive market for hydrogen doesn't work out, this system can be replicated for other areas such as heavy-duty transportation and industrialization, which is what the plan for this company actually is. Unlike startups of old age, this company isn't just focusing on making one car. Instead, they're using it as a test bed for their fuel cell system that they're developing in-house that can hopefully reduce production costs by scaling it up, raising money, and then commercializing it in any industry that needs it. According to the company itself, many partners and customers are indeed waiting for confirmation from Hopium that their technology is validated. This being on the verge of commercialization holds a pretty significant amount of potential for the industry with production expected for this car in 2025. As cliche as this strategy might sound to an accustomed EV enthusiast over the past five years, Hopium's strategy might just make sense and give us the differentiation for the hydrogen industry many people have been waiting for. It's about time an innovator and a startup steps into this space, working from the ground up, instead of trying to commercialize an OEM technology on an old platform. It'll be very interesting to see how this works out and whether or not Hopium is successful. But as you folks, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below.